My dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. We'd like to make a start, inshallah. Uh, firstly, we invite two of our young members of the Jamaat, uh, Sister Hadia Hasnain. She will be reciting a few verses for us from the end of Surah Baqarah. And then we'd have an opening dua by our young Master Amir Amin. And they would be starting off the program, inshallah. Hadia? Assalamu alaikum. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard Wa in tubdu ma fi anfusikum aw tukfuhu yuhasibukum bihillah Fayaghfiru li man yasha'u wa yu'adhimu man yasha'u Wallahu ala kulli shay'in qadir آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون قل آمن بالله وملائكته وقطبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وعطانا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسأها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تواقدنا إن نسنا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وافعنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانسونا على القوم الكافرين السلام عليكم السلام عليكم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله وحر الله صمر لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يقل له كفوا نحر آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يتوق اليتيم ولا يخط والله تعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساون يمنعون الماعون آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بيرحاب الفيل ألم يجعل قيدهم في تدليل وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم به درة من سجيل فجعلهم كأسف مكول آمين سبحان رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على الأرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم
اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والعاقبۃ للمتقین والصلاۃ والسلام علی رسول الکریم اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد في كل لمحه ونفس عدد ما وسيح علمك اور ڈیئر اسٹیمڈ شیخ مولانا صدیق احمد ناصر اور ریسپیکٹڈ حافظ حافظ مجیب distinguished elders brothers and sisters once again i bring you greetings assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakat we are indeed blessed and fortunate this evening to have been favored by our creator allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assemble here in his house on this auspicious night being the night of the 27th of rajab as we are here to give praise and give thanks to him and to commemorate this miraculous occasion uh, this very magnificent occasion of the miraj un nabi where you know scholars have said that this perhaps ranks amongst the most miraculous events to have ever taken place in the history of mankind for without the ascension and the miraj we would not have gotten the gift of salah we would not have had the first hand account of a beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam telling us about his interaction with the creator and about what is in store for us so we are indeed the fortunate ones to be here this evening to observe this occasion to join together in giving praise and in thanking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have with us of course a very distinguished scholar maulana siddiq nasir who is here uh, to give us the feature address this evening we also have some brothers who would be doing uh, qasidas as well and we say jazakallah khair to our two youngsters who started off the program our sister hadia and our brother amir amin may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and continue to increase them in their knowledge of the deen and in their practice inshallah so those are children of the maktab i must give a little plug there so those of you who uh, don't have your children coming to the maktab you know you would probably need to consider sending them inshallah so that they can get the knowledge that is on offer uh, today we have with us half is mujib and we know the occasion we know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in his holy book mentioned about the night journey the al isra wal miraj and so our dear sheikh will be doing a recitation for us uh, from the holy quran and after that he would also uh, recite the last 10 surahs of al quran and you are invited to join in the recitation السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما غوى وما ينطق عن الهوى إن هو إلا وحي يوحى علمه شديد القوى ذو مرة فاستوى وهو بالأفق الأعلى ثم مَدَنَا فَتَدَلَّى مَا كَذَبَ الْفُعَادُ مَا رَأَى أَفَتُمَارُونَهُ عَلَى مَا يَرَى وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ نَزْلَةَ الْأُخْرَى عِنْدَ سِدْرَةِ الْمُنْتَهَى عِنْدَهَا جَنَّةُ الْمَأْوَى إذ يغشى الشدرة يقسى 
ما زاغ البصر وما طغى لقد راى من ايات ربه الكبرى افرايتم اللات والعزى وملات الثالثه الاخرى الكم الذكر وله الانثى تلك اذا قسمه ديزا إن هي إلا أسماء سميتموها أنتم وآباؤكم ما أنزل الله به من سلطان إن يتبعون إلا الظن وما تهوى الأنفس ولقد جاءهم من ربهم الهدى أم للإنسان ما تمنى فلله الآخرة والأولى صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم محجارة من سجيل فجعلهم كأصف مأكول بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لإلاف قريش إلافهم رحلة الشتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا البيت الذي أطعمهم من جوع وآمنهم من خوف بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدق اليتيم ولا يحب على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراءون ويمنعون الماعون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا أيها الكافرون لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد ولا أن عابد ما عبدتم ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد لكم دينكم واليدين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 
تبت يدا أبي لهب وتب ما أغنى عنه ماله وما كسب سيصلى نارا ذات لهب وامرأته حمالة الحطب في جيدها حبل من مسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين آمين الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سجد الأنبياء والمرسلين اللهم أنت السلام منك السلام تباركت ربنا وتعاليك يا يا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاصرين ربنا هب لنا من أزوادنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما رب جعل مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاه ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب رب ارحمهما كما ربيانا صغيرا رب ارحمهما كما ربيانا صغيرا رب ارحمهما كما ربيانا صغيرا اللهم اجلنا من النار اللهم اجلنا من النار اللهم اجلنا من النار اللهم اكفنا بحلالك أن حرامك وأغننا بفضلك أمن سواك سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين آمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Jazakumallah Khairan Hafizah for that beautiful recitation and invoking the words and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our midst. We pray that Almighty Allah would accept this recitation from all of us and grant us the benefit and the blessings of that dua, inshallah. So we say Jazakallah Khair to you for being with us here today and 
for leading us in that very beautiful recitation. I was looking around while you were reciting and so many people seem to have been deep in concentration and contemplating on the words of Allah and that is exactly what we ought to be doing when these blessed verses are you know recited and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the continued guidance and the help to ponder and to act upon his words inshallah so my dear friends as we said we are here this evening for very special purpose and that is to commemorate the Miraj un nabi and it means that those of you who are here are the fortunate ones to have accepted this invitation from your creator to be here and to share in these divine moments you know there's no substitute for coming to the masjid and being in the physical gathering and experiencing that sukoon and that tranquility that descends upon you when you hear these messages and you hear the the tremendous recitations it is a feeling that of course cannot be found anywhere else so as i said you are the the blessed ones to have accepted that invitation to be here this evening we have some very uh, distinguished brothers in our midst uh, to get the feeling you know enhanced and to continue the vibes as we would say different kind of vibes going on right now otherwise in the country but we have spiritual vibes here right so uh, we have our dear uh, brother justice robin mohammed we have our president haji abdul wahid majid and we even have some youngsters in the midst as well so i will ask uh, haji wahid to uh, lead us off with the sana inshallah and then we'll ask one of our youngsters who i know is practicing up today even though she had the call a little bit so we'll make sure and sing along with her and give her that encouragement inshallah assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh the hamd is usually sung in praise of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this i would give the meaning before i sing it it says ruler of the kingdom you have no partner he is one there is no deity but him O Shams et Tabariz, if you seek at God, recite well, there is no God but He. The time when there was neither land, nor the world, nor moon, nor sun, nor the sky, and when truth was not known to anyone, at that time there was nothing except you. When Mustafa sallallahu wasallam, ascended to heaven, and when there was no veil between the master and the servant, then the angels said secretly to the prophet that all of the creations, only he was truth-like. There is no one like you, and that is your grandeur. Oh, the unique one, you are the imagination and inquisitiveness. You are the wish. You are the light and the voice of heart. You were there, you are there, and you will be there. Malikul Mulk La Sharika Lahu Wahdahu La Ilaha Illahu Shamsi Tabriz Gar Khuda Talabi Shamsi Tabriz Gar Khuda Talabi Khushbu Ka La Ilaha Illahu Allahu 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 Allahu, 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 Ye Zami Jab Nati, Ye Jahan Jab Nata, 
ये जमी जब न थी ये जहाँ जब न था चांद सूरज न थे आसमा जब न था राज हक भी किसी पर आया जब न था राज हक भी किसी पर आया जब न था जब न था कुछ यहाँ जब न था कुछ यहाँ ता मगर तू ही तू अल्लाह 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 पहुँच में राज में अर्श तक मुस्तफा पहुँच में राज में अर्श तक मुस्तफा जब न माबूद बंदे में पर्दा रहा जब न माबूद बंदे में पर्दा रहा तब मलाइक ने हजरत से चुप कर कहा तब मलाइक ने हजरत से चुप कर कहा सारे मखलूक में सारे मखलूक में हक नुमा तू ही तू अल्लाह 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 ला इला तेरी शान या वह तू खयालो तजस्स तू ही यार आँख की रोशनी दिल की आवाज तू आँख की रोशनी दिल की आवाज तू था भी तू है भी तू ता भी तू है भी तू होगा भी तू ही तू अल्लाह 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 सलमो या कौम बल सलुअला सदर लामी मुस्तफा मा जाला रहमत लीलाम Jazakallah khair haji sahab for starting us off with praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that leads us into our next item which is also about uh, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his blessed names so i know when this youngster first uh, recited the 99 names of Allah for us for those of you who were here i'm sure you would have been blown away that evening so Uh, tonight is a very appropriate night for us to have a repeat performance so i ask our young sister fatima hasnain to come forward and lead us in the recitation of the 99 names of allah assalamu alaikum ഫാർ അൽക്കാഹാരുഹാബിത്തുൽ 
الغافور الشكور العليم الكبير الحفيظ المقيد الحسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواسي الحكيم الودود المجيد الباس الشهير الحق الواقي القوي المتين الوالي الحميد المكس المبدي المعيد المه المهمير الحي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواهي الصمى القابي الكريم المقدم المؤخر أول الآخر الظاهر الباتن الوال المتعدم بو التواب المتحكم العفو فالمالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المكسد الجامع الخان المنير مانع الطار النافع النولها البريء الباقي الوارث الرشير الصبور الذي ليس كمثله شيء سميع البسيط اللهم صل أطول صلاة عندا أسعد البركاتك سيدنا محمد وآل آله وصحبه وسلم على من ماتك ومدى دكلمات دكل ما ذكرك ذاكر ننرف لا الذكر القافل السلام عليكم الله أكبر ما شاء الله سبحان الله فاطمة now you have to recite from ninety nine go back to one okay Alhamdulillah, you know, there's the Sahih Hadith in uh, Bukhari Sharif that whoever knows the 99 names of Allah will go to paradise. Short Hadith, simple, uh, easy formula, but probably not so easy to memorize, right? So quiz time number 77, was that, Fiyan? <laughs> Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our youngster and continue to increase her in knowledge and iman, inshallah. Ameen. So we have now, we go from one end of the spectrum to the other. Our brother, uh, Haji Nizam Mohammed. Everybody seems to be battling the cold today, so he has to come early in the lineup. And we know he has a very melodious voice, so he's going to do one for us this evening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Hey, <laughs> Ayat e kamal haq Ayan astbutu Azat ke dar parda niha Vudutu hi Suhani raat thi Suhani raat ti Or pusuko zamana ta Asar me dub hua Jam se aashikana ta Unhe tu arsh pe Mahboob ko bula na ta Hawaas ti deed ki Miraj ka bahana ta 
सरलाम खा शीतल भुवी सरलाम खा शीतल भुवी सुवे मुंत हाव चले नबी सरलाम खा शीतल भुवी सुवे मुंत हाव चले नबी सरलाम खा शीतल भुवी सुवे मुंत हाव चले नबी सरलाम का शीतल भुवी सुवे मुंत हाव चले नबी इट वॉज एक्सक्यूज नाइट a beautiful night the prophet was called to the arsh the command came from the highest point to the great beyond his journey began to the arsh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called him from the holy kaaba then to masjid aqsa and then to the arsh and great beyond sarilam ka sital hui सुए मुंतहाव चले नबी एक माल हुसन के मौजसा के फिर हक बीन सहे सका एक माल हुसन के मौजसा के फिर हक नबी से सहे सका सर लाम का शीतल हुई सुए मुंतहाव चले नबी शब्बे मेरा जलिया अर्श भरी पर बुलवा शब्बे मेरा जलिया अर्श भरी पर बुलवा सिज में हिजरे को लासी गवारा न हुआ ना हुआ सर लाम का शीतल भुवी सुए मुंत हाव चले नबी सर लाम का शीतल भुवी सुए मुंत हाव चले नबी सर लाम का शीतल भुवी सुए मुंत हाव चले नबी कुहियर उनके उरूज की कुहियर उनके उरूज की बल गोल लाभ कमाल ही कुहियर उनके उरूज की बल गोल लाभ कमाल ही द प्रोफिट जनित was no limit he could have gone anywhere allah wanted to take him he reached the arsh and then angel gabriel can go again koi har ayun ke uruj ki means that there is no limit to his journey and because of perfection balagula la bikamal he as a president sang together with me he was perfected and he reached the highest point to talk to almighty allah sarilam ka sakal bhui suwe munt haav chale nabi कई बोलोरा सदर दुखा नज मिल हुदा नूर लोला शम सिंधुहा बदर दुजा यानी मोहम्मद मुस्तफा कोही अर उनके रोज की बल गो लला बिकवा सलारीन या रहमतुल्ल आलमीन आ मुक्तदा ए मुरसलीन आ पेशवाए अम्बिया इसमें तो इसमें आजमीन इसमें तो इसमें आजमीन जिसमें तो जाने आलमीन जिसमें तो जाने आलमीन शान तो शान किबरिया कोही अद उनके रोज की बल गो लला बिकमाल ही रुकी मुस्तफ़ा के रोशनी ये तो जल्दियों की हम हमी रुके मुस्तफ़ा के रोशनी ये तो जल्दियों की हम हमी कि हर एक चीज चमक थी कशफत दुजा बेजमाल ही कि हर एक चीज चमक थी कशफत तुझा बेजमाल ही अलगो लला भी कमाल ही अय मजरे नूरे खुदा बल गो लला बिकमाल ही कशफत तुझा बिजमाल ही हसन चमी एक साल ही सलो अल हे व आल ही सलो अल हे व आल ही सलो अल हे व आल ही अवर प्रोफिट अपन पीस ब्रॉथ सूर्य फातिया द फुल शॉप ऑफ द कुरान इन द मेराज एंड द लास्ट टू बुस ऑफ सूर्य बकरा 
and we'll see so under the arch la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah azim and i want to reiterate the point that the our five salat our reward of our five salat is really 50 rewards we are getting for our salat this is hadith qudsi so remember when we read our five salat is really 50 times reward we get in alhamdulillah assalamu alaikum Mashallah, Jazakallah khair. Ajinia, we could go home now. That was a message by itself, subhanAllah. So, um, flipping back now to the youngsters, and we have another youngster who was practicing hard today. Um, our little sister, Maryam Gafar. Not seeing her, yes, okay. So, she will be doing a kasida for us as well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Falake nazaro, samin ki baharo, sabi darmanao, huzura gehen, otube karo, chalo be saharo. Kabaya sunao, huzura gehen. Ano kani alap, huzisha na aya. Wasare rasulun ka, sultana aya. Are bachahao, are kajkulaho, nikahen jukao. Huzura gayen, huzura gayen, huzura gayen, huzura gayen. Wacha su, rahmatun ke basara, ujala ujala, sawira sawira. Halima ko ponchi, kabal amena ki, nega mena ao. Huzura gayen, huzura gayen, huzura gayen, huzura gayen. Huwa mena jazabat, maharba ke. Fazaman menagamat sali ala ke tarudun ke gajare salamut ke tohafe gulamut sajao huzura gaye huzura gaye huzura gaye huzura gaye Assalamu alaikum. Mashallah, like our boss, eh, man. <laughs> Subhanallah. I think she has to get a little special prize because she's turning out to be our uh, new Kasida singer in the making. So she has performed at a few of our functions now. So, Alhamdulillah, may uh, the Almighty bless her to continue in that vein and continue sending praises. And salams upon our beloved messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, my dear friends, you know I'm wearing this Palestinian kefiyah today because, of course, when we talk about the Miraj on Nabi, we remember the blessed lands, the holy lands of the Jerusalem and Masjid al-Aqsa, Bayt al-Maqdis, and we know that that location, that locality, plays a very special part in the Isra or Miraj, the journey, the night journey and then the ascension. So on an evening like this, we cannot not remember our dear brothers and sisters in Philistine. And just an interesting piece of information for you that you may not know. So today being the 27th of Rajab, there are many reports that also says that on the 27th of Rajab was when 
the famous Sultan Salahuddin Ayubi was able to conquer or reconquer Al Quds, the Holy Lands, and to take it back from the Crusaders. So there's a famous, you know, quote attributed to him where he said, "How can you know food taste good in my stomach or water when the Holy Lands are under the control of the Crusaders?" So this would have been his life mission to uh, recover and to bring the Holy Lands back under the control or the authority of the Muslims. So we're begging out for Salahuddin in these times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant victory to our brothers and sisters, ease and comfort, inshallah. So before we move to Maulana Siddiq Nasir for our feature address, as I mentioned earlier, we have our distinguished justice Robin Mohammed with us, so I invite him to render Kasida for us and then we uh, will move to Molana side. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Ya Rabbi salli alayhi wa sallim Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Ya Rabbi salli alayhi wa sallim Ya Rasulullah, Ya Habib Allah Thousands of blessings upon you Ya Rasulullah, Ya Habib Allah Your Ummah sends blessings upon you your glory will always remain. Your legacy will never fade. Your glory will always remain. Your legacy will never fade. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Ya Rabbi salli alayhi wa sallim Allahumma salli Allah Muhammad Ya Rabbi salli alayhi wa sallim In keeping with the solemnity of the occasion, but of course it's still a celebration. We send praises and salams on to our Holy Prophet Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and recall the significance of tonight. And it says, O Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, mine is a lowly station and yours exalted beyond imagination. You are commander of the holy sanctuary in Arabia, and I a destitute foreigner. I am but a humble seeker, my sinful lips unworthy to sing your lofty praises. You are nothing but mercy and benefaction, and I but fault and error. Mine is a lowly station, and yours exalted beyond imagination. You are gloriously adorned in the robe of divine revelation. The holy book forms your exalted turban. The highest heaven is your pulpit. O oh, mercy for all the worlds. O oh, angels, he is the king of the night journey. Al Isra wal Maharaj, Un Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His radiant face will give the appearance of the Quran in its entirety. His radiant face 
will give that appearance. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya Nabi, Ya Nabi. Jaman ku ja, tu ku jaman ku ja, ha, tu ku jaman ku ja, ha, tu ku jaman ku ja, tu amir e haram, mai fakir e ajam, tu amir e haram, mai fakir e ajam. तेरे गुन और ये लब मैं तलब ही तलब तेरे गुन और ये लब मैं तलब ही तलब तू आता ही आता तू कुजा मन कुजा तू कुजा मन कुजा हाँ तू कुजा मन कुजा हाँ तू कु जा मन कु जा इल्हाम है जामा तेरा इल्हाम है जामा तेरा कुरान मामा है तेरा कुरान मामा है तेरा मिंबर तेरा अरशे बरे मिंबर तेरा अरशे बरे या रहमतुल्लिल आलमीन तू कुजा मन कुजा हाँ तू कुजा मन कुजा हाँ तू कुजा मन कुजा हाँ तू कुजा मन कुजा तू हकीकत है मैं सिर्फ एहसास हूँ तू समंदर में भटकी हुई प्यास हूँ तू हकीकत है मैं सिर्फ एहसास हूँ तू समंदर में भटकी हुई प्यास हूँ मेरा घर का के पर और तेरी रा गुजर मेरा घर का के पर और तेरी रा गुजर सिद्रतुल मुन्ता तू कु जा मन कु जा हाँ तू कु जा मन कु जा हाँ तू कु जा मन कु जा हाँ तू कुजा मन कुजा सा सा रे सा नी पानी सगा मगा मरे सा रे नी सा सा रे सा नी पानी सगा मगा मरे सा रे नी सा ए फरिश्तो वो सुल्ताने महराज हैं ए फरिश्तो वो सुल्ताने महराज हैं तुम जो देखोगे हैरान हो जाऊँगे तुम जो देखोगे हैरान हो जाऊंगे जुल्फ़ तफसील वाले लो बन जाऊंगी जुल्फ़ तफसील वाले लो बन जाएगी चेहरा कुरान सारा नजर आएगा चेहरा नजर आएगा चेहरा नजर आएगा चेहरा नजर आएगा चेहरा नजर आएगा मेरे आकाई मामे सफ़े अम्बिया नाम पी उनके लाज़िम है सल्ले अल्लाह 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 तू कुजा मन कुजा मुस्तफा मुच्छतबा खातिमुल मुरसलीन यार रहमतुल्लिल आलमीन 
तू कु मन कु जा आ तू कु मन कु जा आ तू कु मन कु जा आ तू कु मन कु जा खैरुल बशर रुतबा तेरा खैरुल बशर रुतबा तेरा आवाज हक खुतबा तेरा आवाज हक खुतबा तेरा आफाक तेरे सामयीन आफाक तेरे सामयीन साए से जिबरील अमीन साए से जिबरील अमीन या रहमतुल्लिल आलमीन तू कु मन कु जा हाँ तू कु मन कु जा हाँ तू कु मन कु जा हाँ तू कु मन कु जा तू कु मन कु जा तू कु मन कु जा बलगलुला बेकमल ही कशफ तुझा बेजमाल ही बलगलुला बेकमल ही कशफ तुझा बेजमाल ही हसनत जमी यूँ के सोल ही सल्लु अलई ही वाल 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 ही जजाकला असलम Waalaikum assalam jazakallah mashallah very powerful rendition from our dear justice sab and you know half his mujib of course is from india so he could tell you people pay big money to go and hear these qawalis in india right so we had two today we had one from justice robin and we had one from brother nizam as well so i hope you guys thoroughly enjoyed those selections My dear brothers and sisters remember at this moment you are in a circle of zikrullah a circle of remembrance we know the hadith that the angels roam the earth are looking for persons assembled remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so consider every moment that you are here the blessings and the good deeds are being written for you the reason i'm saying that is i want you to give your fullest attention to our dear molana sahib we know that we always learn something from him but it is up to us to focus to pay attention and to absorb what he has to say so please i invite you to give your attention to our dear respected sheikh molana sidiq ahmad nasir as he delivers the feature address this evening alhamdulillah alhamdulillahil wahidil abadi was salatu was salam ala an nabiyil ummi al arabi المنزل عليه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وتفضل وتبارك ونعم على أفضل الموجودات وأحسن الموجودات وأجمل الموجودات سيد السادات سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم इलाही वो जबाँ दे जो सना खान मोहम्मद हो सना ऐसी जो हर आइन शायान मोहम्मद हो वो जान पाक दे या रब जो क़ुरबान मोहम्मद हो वो दिल दे जो शिकार तीर मिशगान मोहम्मद हो अलीम खस्त जहाँ तंग आ गया है दर्द हिजरा से इलाही कब वो दिन आए के मेहमान मोहम्मद हो अम्माबाद السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. The ever bountiful Creator Allah سبحانه وتعالى subjected His beloved Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم 
to a number of severe tests. First of all, we had the boycott by the Quraysh of the Bani Hashim, which lasted between two and three years. No one from outside could sell anything to them, so they could not even buy food. No one from outside could buy anything from them, so they could not engage in trade. No one from outside, no male from outside will marry any female from the Bani Hashim, and no female, for, of, um, no male from the Bani Hashim will be allowed to marry any female from outside. And this was a boycott. And there was a perpetual shortage of food for more than two years. And after this boycott ended, then we have Ummul Mu'minina Sayyidatuna Khadija radiallahu ta'ala and her passing away. And then after that, Abu Lahab passing away. And this was known as the Amul Huzn, the year of sadness. And then the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after being rejected by the people of Makkah decided to take this guidance to the people of Ta'if. And so he went to the city of Ta'if to present the message to them and they rejected the message. And not only did they reject the message but they stoned him. So much so that we are told in the books of Sirah that his, his footwear became filled with blood, his blood, because he was stoned. And then the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was going back to Makkah. And he stopped off in the night. And he was, as he was reciting the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him that some of the jinns listened to the Quran and they accepted Islam. And they decided they are, that they are going to take this message to their fellow jinns. So rejected by Makkah, rejected by Ta'if, but accepted by some of the jinns. And then when the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned to the city of Makkah, it was then that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the invitation to him. He had gone to the home of his cousin Sayyidatuna Umm Muhani radiallahu ta'ala anha. And then she invited him to spend the night there with, with them. And he went to sleep. And later in the night he got up and went to the Kaaba. And went to sleep again in the Hatim. That area between the semicircular wall and the building of the Kaaba. And it was there that Jibreel alayhi salam came. And conveyed the invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him. Right. So... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had invited the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Jibreel alayhi salam, we are told, that he cut open the chest of the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and took out his heart and washed it with the water of Zamzam and took out something from inside his heart. And, and scholars have said that what was removed by Jibreel alayhi salam from the heart of the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi salam, because his heart was always pure is what is called the, the portion of shaitan Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam was sent as rahmatul alameen a mercy to all the worlds which means that he was a mercy to shaitan as well but on that occasion it, this was what was removed from his heart the portion of shaitan so he was no longer a mercy to shaitan. And then Jibreel alayhi salam filled his heart with iman and hikmah, with faith and wisdom. And this was the preparation for this journey. And then befitting his dignity and status, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a special means of transport for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Isa alayhi salam was taken up by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any means of transport. But befitting the dignity and status and honor of the beloved messenger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the special means of transport for him the Burak and he sent the leader of the angels to convey him so Jibreel alayhi salam and there are some reports that Mikhail alayhi salam also was there and so they conveyed the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in surah al-isra 
سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنوريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير Glory be to him who took his servant for a journey by night from the Masjid al-Haram in Makkah to the Masjid al-Aqsa in Jerusalem, the precincts of which we have blessed. Certainly he is a sami the one who hears, and al-Basir, the one who sees. Now, Sulaiman salam had rebuilt the Masjid al-Aqsa. But the Bandi children of Israel, after, just after the time of Sulaiman alayhi salam, fell into infighting. And so the kingdom of Israel was divided into two. The kingdom of Israel in the north with ten tribes, and the kingdom of Judah in the south with Jerusalem with two tribes. And there are some reports that actually there were three tribes, because one of the tribes was divided into two. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the Bani Israel will create mischief and corruption twice. And so the, these ten tribes, they created so much mischief and corruption and engaged in idol worship and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Assyrians against them and the Assyrians overran them. And they dispersed these ten tribes and these ten tribes became lost. Their identity no longer preserved and they are the lost ten tribes of Israel. But then subsequent to this, in the year 586, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians and they overran the kingdom of Judah and took the people into captivity and into slavery and they destroyed the masjid. They destroyed the masjid built, rebuilt by Sulaiman alayhi salam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he will allow them to come back again to he allowed them to come back. Right? So the Persians defeated the Babylonians and allowed this remnant of the Bani Israel to come back. And they rebuilt the masjid. But they, of course they didn't call it masjid, masjid al -Aqsa. They rebuilt it about 70 years after it had been destroyed. And then that area came under the Greeks and then finally under the Romans. And then in the year 70 of this era, the Romans destroyed the masjid again. They raised the masjid, well, they called it the Temple of Solomon, to the ground. Right? 500 years before the beloved messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi was born. So when, when the beloved messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was born, there was no masjid in that spot. The masjid had been destroyed by the Romans in the year 70. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Glory be to him who took his servant for a journey by night from the Masjid al-Haram to the Masjid al-Aqsa. And this brings home to us the fact that once there is a Masjid satisfying all the rules of Masjid, the air above the Masjid and the ground below the Masjid are also Masjid. If you build another story on top of the Masjid, that will also be Masjid. If you dig a basement, in the, that will also be masjid. And if you destroy the building, that spot is also masjid. So that was the spot where Rasulullah was taken to. From Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa. And Allah says, the precincts of which we have blessed. We have blessed. And the hadith literature does not tell us how far, what extent was blessed. The precincts of which we have blessed. But when we compare this to the Kaaba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the first house, the first house of worship established for mankind is the one at, Mac, at Bakka, the old name of Makkah. Mubarakan wa hudan lil alameen. Full of blessings and guidance for all the worlds. This one, Allah says, the precincts of this we have blessed. But about the Kaaba, Allah says, full of blessings and guidance for all the worlds. Right? So, that was there. And then, Allah says, tells us the reason why he took the beloved messenger وسلم, on this journey. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a number of functions of, of Rasulullah in the glorious Quran. And some of these functions were unique to Rasulullah. No other prophet had some of these functions. Of course, every prophet was the warner and bearer of glad tidings and so on and so on. But some of the functions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
mentions about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi were unique to him alone. Like for example, he was sent as Rahmatul Alameen, mercy to all the worlds. Not only to this world, but to all the worlds. He was a mercy to all the worlds. In Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah number 33, Ayat 45 and 46, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Ya ayuhan Nabi, inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadhira wa da'iyan ila Allahi bi iznihi wa sirajan munira. O Prophet, verily we have sent you as a shahid, as a witness, and as a bearer of glad tidings, and as a warner, and as one who invites to Allah with the permission of Allah, and as a light, a, a lamp that illuminates. In among these functions, the very first one was unique to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No other prophet had been sent as a witness. Yes, we are told as a shahid. Yes, we are told that some of the prophets will be shaheed over their peoples. They will be witnesses over their people. But no other prophet was sent as a shahid, as a witness. The beloved messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was sent as a witness. And to be a witness in the best way, one needs to have first-hand knowledge about that over which one is a witness. And it was on the occasion of the Mi'raj that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that first-hand knowledge. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in this ayah. Subhanallah the asra bi abdihi layla min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa alladhi barakna hawlahu linuriyahu min ayatina so that we may show him of our signs. So that we may grant him that first-hand knowledge. Innahu huwa sami' al-basir. Verily, he is the one who is the sami' and the basir. Now, while the majority of the mufassirin hold that the pronoun in verily he refers to Allah, there are those who hold that the pronoun refers to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. For example, Alama Alusi in his tafsir has said that the pronoun refers to Rasulullah. He is sami' and basir. And we have the eminent. Uh, scholar from Makkah, Sheikh al-Maliki, who also have said that the pronoun in verily he refers to Rasulullah. He is Sami and Basir. That after hearing what no other in creation had heard, and after seeing what no other in creation had seen, he has become the one who hears and the one who sees, the Sami and the Basir. Right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him on this journey to bestow upon him this first-hand knowledge. Right. He sent a special means of transport befitting the dignity of the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he sent the Jibreel alayhi salam, the leader of the angels to convey him. And Jibreel alayhi salam took the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Masjidul Haram to Masjidul Aqsa, from Makkah to Jerusalem. But the hadith literature tells us that Jibreel alayhi salam caused him to stop in a number of places between Makkah and Jerusalem. He stopped in the city of Yathrib and Jibreel, and told, uh, Jibreel alayhi salam told him to perform two rakats nafil there and informed him that this will be the place to which he will make the hijrah. Then Jibreel alayhi salam caused him to stop at the grave of Musa alayhi salam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam saw Musa alayhi salam performing salat in his grave. Then he was taken to where Isa alayhi salam was born, which in Arabic is Baytulaham, Bethlehem, Baytulaham. And finally he was taken to the Masjid al-Aqsa. And there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had caused all of the prophets to assemble. And they were waiting. When Jibreel alayhi salam came with the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he indicated to the beloved messenger وسلم, that he should lead them in salat, reconfirming his position as Imam al Anbiya, the Imam of all the prophets. And so Rasulullah وسلم, led them in salat. And then Jibreel alayhi salam presented to him two vessels, one of milk and one of wine. And the beloved messenger وسلم, took the vessel of milk and drank it. And Jibreel alayhi salam told him, You have chosen the fitra, the true nature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has as endowed with human beings, right? And then Jibreel alayhi salam started, you know, to ascend with the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi salam. Now, there is a rock that is there in, uh, there in Jerusalem. And oh, the 
Muslims a few decades after the beloved messenger Sallallahu and to preserve that rock they built a dome over it over it and it, that is the dome of the rock now it is a gold colored dome dome of the rock that is not Masjid al-Aqsa Masjid al-Aqsa is nearby to preserve that rock so there are different reports about the rock that when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi and the Burak started to ascend the rock started to lift up as well and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi indicated to it or touched it and it stopped there are some reports like this Anyhow, Rasulullah Sallallahu was taken up through the Samawat. Now, many people, because they rely on translations, they get confused about this journey and said that when Rasulullah Sallallahu reached the first heaven, that he met, he met Adam Alayhi Salaam in the first heaven. Now, if Adam Alayhi Salaam is in the lowest heaven, no other human being will ever be able to go in any higher heaven because the prophets are the greatest of all human beings. Now, Rasulullah was not taken to Jannah. He was taken to the Samawat, which are the firmaments in this universe. The seven firmaments, the seven Samawat. This is not Jannah. So, the, uh, the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has so set it up that for every one of these seven Samawat, there is a gate and there is a gatekeeper. Angel who is a gatekeeper. And it is only when the gatekeeper allows anyone to pass that that person can pass right in the hadith literature we are told that when a righteous servant passes away and this the angel of death takes his soul the other angels who come there they take the soul from the angel of, of death and they ascend with it and the gatekeepers of each one of the seven firmaments allows them to go through until they reach the seventh firmament seventh sama. Right? And then they are sent back to earth. And when an evil person dies and the angel of death takes his soul and the other angels, stern and severe angels, take the soul from the angel of death and they start to ascend, the gatekeeper of the first of the four members does not allow that soul to go further up. And the Hadith literature says that from the soul of the evil person, there's a stench as well. And when the angels smell this stench, they know this is an evil person. Anyhow, so when he reached the first of the firmaments, the gatekeeper inquired, who is this? And he said, Jibreel, and who is with you? Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And has he been sent for? Yes. And so the gatekeeper allowed him, uh, allowed him to pass through. And there he met Sayyidina Adam, alayhi salam. But he did not only meet Adam, alayhi salam. He was taken to the first firmament to grant him the first hand knowledge of this firmament, what and what is there in the firmament. You know. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Isra, Surah number 17, ayah number 44, to sabbi hulahu samawa to sabu wal ardu wa wan fi hin. Wa im min shayin illa yu sabbi ubi hamdi wa laki la tafkahuna tasbi hahum. The seven samawat makes tasbi of Allah. The Samawat, the seven firmaments make the tasbih of Allah. And the earth and all the beings in the Samawat on the earth make tasbih of Allah. And there is not a single thing except that it makes the tasbih of Allah. But you, that is you human beings, do not understand their tasbih. So he, the beloved messenger, Salsa, was given first-hand knowledge of this. This sama, this firmament, making tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every, whatever else was there in, the, in the, the first firmament. And then he was taken to the second and third and fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh. Each one of them, you know, there's a prophet. The Isa alayhi salam in the second one and Yusuf alayhi salam in the third and so on. Musa alayhi salam in the sixth of the firmament and Ibrahim alayhi salam in the seventh. So he was taken over through these seven firmaments. Now, Imam Shahabuddin al Qastalani has said that this, this journey had ten stages. The first seven stages were the seven firmaments. And then the eighth stage was Sidratul Muntaha, which is normally translated as the Lot tree. Right? And the ninth stage was the Mustawa. And the tenth stage was the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rasulullah was taken up through the seven firmaments. He met some of the prophets. And we are not told in the hadith literature why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had these prophets in the firmaments. Then the beloved messenger was going. He had led them in salat in Jerusalem 
before, but they had gone back there. And then when he went to the Sidrat al Muntaha, this is the furthest limit it is called, al the Muntaha. And it was here that Jibreel al Islam stopped going ascending. And when Rasulullah asked him, at this place will a Khalil leave a Khalil? And Jibreel salam said, were he to go any further, the Noor will burn him. So he could not go any further. So Rasulullah went on alone to the next stage, the Mustawa. And in the Mustawa, Rasulullah heard the pens writing the destinies. Now, this clearly indicates to us that Rasulullah is now far outside of space and time because the pens have written the destinies long ago. But Rasulullah heard the pens writing. He was outside of space time. He heard the pens writing the destinies. Right? There. So, we, the Hadith literature tells us that at some point in time, the Burak could also not ascend any further. It did not have the capacity to extend to ascend any further. And Rasulullah was provided with another means of transport called the, the rough rough. And so Rasulullah went up and he went up <coughs> to the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are some reports <coughs> that from the arsh it dropped, descended on the tongue of the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that bestowed on him the Ilmul awwalina wal akhiri, knowledge of the firsts and of the lasts. He was given knowledge of the firsts and of the last. Now remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him on this journey to give him this first hand knowledge. Right? He was given knowledge of the firsts and of the last. And so he had knowledge of the past and the future as well. Right? And though in the Quran we get glimpses of this knowledge of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when Rasulullah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alam tara, alam tara means have you not seen? And it is addressed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It means, O Prophet, have you not seen? Have you not seen, does not mean have you not seen with your sense of sight, but have you not seen indicates knowledge. Have you not seen the one who disputed with Ibrahim alayhi salam about his rub? The past and the future, you know, there, that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rasulullah informed, you know, uh, Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala who tells us that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa addressed the companions. This hadith is transmitted by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam am Muslim. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did not leave out anything that will happen in that place of his until the end of the world without telling the companions about it. Because he was given this knowledge. And the another hadith from Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa inform them of the names of every leader of fitna up to the end of the world whose, fo whose followers will number 300 or more. They inform them of the name, the father's name and the tribe to which they will belong. Right? This is the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, took the beloved messenger up further. And then you know, he is now not only outside of space and time, of space time but beyond space-time and beyond the beyond the beyond of space-time. Finally, he went into the Hadirat al-Quds, the special presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for one of a better uh, translation. Now, we have many of the scholars who say that, like Yasir Khadi says, it is a myth that Rasulullah greeted Allah with atahiyatu lillahi wa salawat wa tayyibat. But, one of the leading scholars of Sira of the last century, whom even Yasir al-Qadi has praised, he has said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith of the Quds, at-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibat, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, As-salamu alayka ayuhan nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And subsequently, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the companions why he, Rasulullah said, As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin peace be on us and on all the righteous servants of Allah, that he did not want the greeting of peace given in Hadrat al-Quds to be confined to him alone. So he said, peace be on us and on all the righteous servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of the eminent scholars, like, you know, we have that eminent um, uh, Yemeni scholar, um, you know, Habib Umar ibn Hafiz, 
you know, he also said that at the Hiyat, that was Rasulullah had said there, right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, awha ila abdihi ma awha. Allah revealed to him whatever he revealed. We have not been told what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to his beloved messenger. But the hadith literature tells us that the beloved messenger sallallahu was endowed with knowledge. Some knowledge was meant for him alone because no one else could bear that knowledge. Some knowledge was such that he was given the option to, trans to um, transmit, to convey or not to convey. And he, from this knowledge he conveyed to some of the comp special companions. And the uh, other knowledge he was given to be conveyed to everyone and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi conveyed this knowledge to everyone. Right? And in the Hadirat al Quds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed him of salat being compulsory 50 times a day. 50 times a day. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon him the last two verses of Surah Al Baqarah, which are a little. Uh, recited at the beginning amana rasulu bima unzila ilayhi min rabbi wal mu'minun to the end this two ayat were given to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi and he said these two ayat came from under the arsh of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are recommended that that we should recite these two ayat every night before we go to sleep right so we should learn these two ayat and recite it uh, and recite them every night so the whole of the Quran except for these two verses was conveyed to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi through Jibreel Alayhi Salaam. But these two ayat directly by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Right? And all of the commands that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given, the command for fasting, the command for zakat, the command for hajj, the command for jihad, the command for everything was conveyed through Jibreel Alayhi Salaam. But the command for salat was given directly by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And so this command occupies a special place there, right? So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then started to descend. But when he, re when he descended and re to the sixth of the Samawat, and he met Musa Alayhi Salaam, and Musa Alayhi Salaam asked him what he had been given, and he told him uh, Salat 50 times a day. And Musa Alayhi Salaam said, from his experience of the Bani Israel, your Ummah will not be able to bear this. So go back and request Allah to reduce. And Rasulullah went back and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reduced it. Some of the reports said by five and some say by ten. And Musa alayhi salam again said, Is the, uh, your ummah will not be able to go back again and go back again and, until it came to five. And Musa alayhi salam said, your ummah will not be able with this five. So go back and ask Allah to reduce it. And Rasulullah told Musa alayhi salam, that he is now shy. He has gone so many times, he's now shy to go back again. And so he is satisfied with this five. And then a voice was heard that the original command still stands. Salat 50 times a day. But the carrying out of the command has been lightened for the ummah. So you will perform five salawat, but you will get the reward of the 50, which is the original command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came back with this command. He came back to Jerusalem first and then to Makkah. And when he was there approaching Makkah, there are, were some caravans that were approaching Makkah and he saw them. Now, um, you want to know, you know, I mean, some people say the Burak traveled with the speed of light. The speed of light cannot even begin to explain uh, how the Burak travel because light takes more than four years to come to the earth from the nearest star. So if the Burak was going from earth to the nearest star using the speed of light, it will have taken them four years to go. Four years of our time to go. So it's not the speed of light, so we should just give up that. But as Rasulullah was going from, Madi from Jerusalem to Makkah, he saw these caravans. Oh, you may want to know Rasulullah is traveling. How is he able to observe these caravans? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Naml, Surah number 27, about Sulaiman alayhi salam. He had been granted knowledge of the, the, the language of the animals and the ants and so on and so forth. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in ayah number 18 of Surah Al-Naml that when Sulaiman alayhi salam and his army were marching, one ant said to the other ants, go into your habitations lest Sulaiman alayhi salam and his armies crush you without knowing. Now, over and above all the noise being made by the army marching, Sulaiman alayhi salam was able to hear what that ant said to the other ant and understand it and he smiled and he made a dua and we should learn this dua and say it too. This is the dua of Sulaiman alayhi salam in Surah Al-Naml, Surah number 27, ayah number 19. Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati anamta alayya wa ala walidai wa an a'mala salihan tarda wa aslih wa adkhilni bi rahmatika fi ibadika salihin. O my Rabb, Grant me the capacity to show gratitude to you for the favor which you bestowed on me and for the favor which you bestowed on my two parents. And grant me the capacity to act righteously, earning your pleasure, and make me enter through your mercy and grace among your righteous servants. So Suleiman he was able to hear. The, so Rasulullah was traveling from Jerusalem to Makkah at what speed we don't know, but he observed these caravans approaching Makkah. So Rasulullah went back to Makkah, and then he went back to the house of Umuhani, radiallahu ta'ala anha. And in the morning, he told her about the journey from Makkah to Jerusalem. And she begged him, she begged him not to tell the Quraysh because they were going to ridicule him. But he said that he was going to tell them. And so in the morning, he told the Quraysh about his journey from Makkah to Jerusalem and back. Now, you know, the Quraysh did not believe in hereafter and life after death and all of these things, right? So he didn't tell him anything about the firmaments and all of these. He told him Makkah to Jerusalem. So they ridiculed him. Everybody knows it takes one month to go from Makkah to Jerusalem and one month to come back. And you want to say you went one night and come back, came back in the same night? So they went to Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and said, look what your friend is saying. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala told them, if he said so, it is the truth. They said, how can you confirm this? He said, well, I accept that he gets revelations from beyond the Samawat. And that is nothing, uh, this going from here to Jerusalem uh, is nothing in comparison with that. So when they went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, gave him the title of As-Siddiq, the conformer of truth, Abu Bakr As-Siddiq and Abu Bakr the conformer of truth. So he got that title from there because he confirmed what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said. But anyhow, the ridiculing by the Quraysh brings home a very important point. That Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi did not tell them that he had a dream that he went to Jerusalem. Because anybody can have a dream, you have a dream, you went to Mars, oh, no problem, no, no basis for ridicule. He also did not tell them that he went to Jerusalem spiritually, but his body was still in Makkah, but he went spiritually. Because, uh, I mean, you can say, you know, spiritually last night I went to Mars. Yeah, yeah maybe you, spiritually you went to Mars. No, no basis for ridicule. But you go and tell somebody, last night I, with my whole personality, body and everything, I went to Mars and I came back. Most people would say, St. Anne's for you. Right. So the ridiculing in then brings home to us the reality that the mirage of the beloved messenger Solasa was undertaken with his total personality in a state of wakefulness. And this is the this is the aqidah of the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah in the world. That the mirage of the beloved messenger Solasa was undertaken with his total personality, body and soul and total personality, and in a state of wakefulness. Right. So, that is the mirage of the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, the, we can reflect a little on the question of the salat. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi brought, brought back that command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has a special place because it is the only command that was given directly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the other commands were given through Jibreel alayhi salam. Right? And it is the very first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inquire about on the day of judgment. 
but we need to reflect on what Musa alayhi salam said. The five salawat, your ummah will not be able. If you look at the ummah uh, today, two billion people, we have hundreds of millions of people who perform no salat. We have so many under 100 million who perhaps perform salat on Eid or Eid and Ramadan. And then we have some Muslims who perform salat a few times, two times or, or, or one time a day. And we have a smaller number who perform salat five times a day. So what Musa alayhi salam has said, your ummah will not be able with this five times. This is, we see it in reality these days. Right? And this has been the case before. So, the salat, we have to reflect on it because it has come directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is the very first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inquire about on the day of judgment. So, and the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, As-salatu mi'rajul mu'mineen. Salat is the mi'raj of the believers. From his mi'raj, he brought that which can constitute the mi'raj of the believers. Right? So, whenever we perform salat, and we recite a tahiyyat, in a sense, in a sense, we are reenacting the meeting between Rasulullah Sallallahu and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in the Hadirat al Quds, the special presence of Allah, because Rasulullah had said a tahiyyat, and Allah said, "Assalamu alaikum, ayyuhan Nabi Rahmatullah barakatuh." And then Rasulullah said, "Assalamu alaina wa ala ibadillahi salihin." We are in a sense reenacting that meeting, right? The command came from the Mi'raj of the beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and every time we perform salat, we are reenacting. That in a sense, in a sense, reenacting that meeting. Right? And because the salat is the mi'raj of the mu'mineen, we have to strive to improve the quality of our salat, beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with our mi'raj in our salat. Right? So as we commemorate the mi'raj, of the beloved messenger Sallallahu tonight, tonight being the 27th night of the month of Rajab. And we are told that we should spend some time performing some Nafil Salat tonight. And also, we have been advised by the righteous to observe an optional fast tomorrow. So those of us who can observe an optional fast tomorrow, right? 27th of Rajab. So we have to strive not only be to, to be regular and punctual in our salat, but to strive to continue, to continue to improve the quality of our salat. Beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the while to bless us with our mi'raj in our salat. Right? And the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought guidance. That guidance that he brought is for all of us. Now, in Surah Al-Najm, that Hafiz Mujib was reciting, you know, there is a verse, Fastawa wa huwa bil ufukil a'ala. Now, Yusuf Ali does not have this translation, but according to the Lane's Arabic English lexicon, this is one of the meanings of Fastawa. And this is why Maulana Fazl Rahman and Sayyid Ramtullah has translated it this way in his, in his book. That Rasulullah Sallallahu attained completion in knowledge. He attained completion in knowledge while he was in the highest horizon right so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon him first hand knowledge of everything in creation and you know of Jannah and Jahannam and so on so when the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the companions about Jannah that no eye has ever seen the like of it no ear has ever heard a description of it nor has it ever occurred to the heart of a human being what Jannah is like. When he was informing them of this, he was doing so on the basis of first-hand knowledge because he had been given first-hand knowledge of Jannah. Right? And he had been given first-hand knowledge of Jahannam, so he saw the punishments that people will be getting. You know, those who consume riba, those who commit zina, those who, you know, do this and those who do that, and those who do, do, do not perform their salat. Uh, and... and all the other things. So he was able 
to say this on the ba con uh, I mean, con convey this on the basis of first-hand knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him. So Allah grant took him on this journey while he was on that journey, you know. And when Allah says in Surah Al-Najm, Allah revealed to his servant what he revealed, whatever Allah revealed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ma ma ra'a. His heart did not falsify anything that he saw. 